Somewhere between four to seven billion years ago, Erinor happened. Where did Erinor come from? He came from a garden, the garden, and it was created by the mother goddess, Theol. Nobody knows who Theol is except the Hiram, but they live in the mountains and don't talk to other people. A bunch of humans live on Aurora, and a bunch of elves and dwarves too. Fearon live on the eastern continent down south, but got bored and also hungry because drought is stupid, and they left and also came back to Aurora. They found some human kingdoms with food, so they took over those. One guy, Tyang, didn't like that, so he left. There was a kingdom called Ethereum that had an illegitimate prince named, but not really named, Jean. But he had to run away for reasons, and then he ran into Tyang. The mist assassin tried to kill Tyang, so Jean killed it. Now they are friends. They went to Delphinad, a huge city. Now they're in a gang. They're called Shadowhawk. They made friends, Orchidna and Kiprosa, who are sisters. Jean thinks Kiprosa's pretty. Orchidna's different. Kiprosa is good at magic, so she went to school and learned how to go to a magical mage exclusive realm called Ionad. She met an elf named Aranzeb. Aranzeb is an assistant instructor at her school. Aranzeb thinks Kiprosa's pretty, but also he still misses his dead wife and daughter. It's complicated. The gang meets Alexander, and he's a good teacher. Aranzeb introduces everyone to Ayana for help with stuff. She serves soup to the poor. Also, she's the governor's daughter. Malasara joined Jean's gang and totally isn't going to kill him, but maybe secretly was going to kill him and forgot because she likes him. A playwright named Lucius is pretending to be poor so he can see Ayana a lot. Lucius thinks Ayana is pretty. She secretly goes to his place. He charms her. She's not mad that he lied about not actually being poor. A dwarf named Olo comes to the school. I want to rewind time, Olo says. You cannot rewind time, Alexander says. I will rewind time, Olo says. Aranzeb's goddaughter, Aranzebia, also shows up. She's in love with him. It's weird. Alexander says Archidna wigs him out and makes him think of the Akash, so he kicks Kiprosa out of school. Aranzeb sticks around for a bit, then he goes and tells the gang about the Akash and some ancient shit. Now the gang gets into theology. Figuring out that there was one creator goddess and all the other gods are way less important, Lucius wrote a play called Scoundrel, and some people loved it, and some people hated it. Then an Astra showed up and was like, I'm a Hiram, who turned into an Astra, and Hiram actually know a lot about the creator goddess, so let's talk. And they did. And Lucius wrote an edgier play called The Scoundrel's God. They got a Misa named Naima to act as the goddess. The Astra authorities, who actually ran Delphinad, got mad, so they arrested Lucius, but Enoch was like, I gave him the ideas. So they locked up Enoch and Naima instead. And then the gang busted them out and ran out of Delphinad, headed for the Hira Mountains. Now they're called the Library Expedition. They met some people there who told them how to find the navel of the world, the garden. So they went and looked, and Jean had some love problems with Kiprosa, so he got drunk and slept with Naima, who now thinks that he is her husband. Then they got to the navel, and a dragon almost killed Jean, but Naima got in the way and died instead, because that's what a Misak wife does for her husband, I guess. Also, he knocked her up, but nobody knew that. Then the eleven survivors got to the bottom of the navel. Orchidna opened the gate. Uh oh, now she's stuck with eternal gate guard duty. Damn it, Orchidna said. Damn it, Kiprosa and everyone else said. Help me, Orchidna said. BRB, said everyone before going ahead and entering the garden. The garden was a realm where time was whack. Let's stay together and not split up, said the group before not staying together and splitting up. Some people found chairs that grew out of tree roots and sat in them. Holo left and realized he was a god and he could make stuff. Now he was called Shadigon. He went to Delphinad Library and was like, let me see all the books you have on time. And they were like, no. Then Enoch left and he realized he was a god and he could see the future, like that Olo was going to destroy the Delphinad Library. Enoch went to Delphinad and was like, hey, stop that. Also, my new god name is Haje. And Shadigon was like, no. And then they had a war, and Shadigon was pushed out of Delphinad and led an army of dwarves to attack the city, and Haje defended the city. Then Jean came out, and he missed Kiprosa, so he went to Delphinad and realized a couple hundred years had passed, and everyone he had ever loved and known had died. So he went home to Ephirium, and he found a corpse on a stick. Hey, I know you, he said. Then he reanimated the body with his special new god powers, and the body was like, Sup, I'm Anthelon. I dated your mom. You're the god of destruction, and your name is Kyrios. And Kyrios was like, Ah, shoot. Okay. Now Kyrios got involved in the thing between Shadigon and Haje. Lots of people died. Delphinad didn't like Haje because he was stuffy, so he got pushed out. Aranzebia came out at some point and looked for her godfather but couldn't find him, so she made some other elves look just like him with her magic and also made them her slaves, which was really weird. Also, now she's the goddess of the sea, Dehuda. Iana came out and realized right away that lots of people were dying and she felt bad. Also, now she's the goddess of death in the hereafter, Nui. The heroes came out at some point. Tyang, Aranzeb, Melisara, Kiprosa. Orkidna said to Kiprosa, Hey sis, can you help me yet? Also, I'm a little crazy from hundreds of years of solitude and maybe some of that Akash magic Alexander hated so much. Kiprosa was like, BRB, I have to find Jean. Damn it, Orkidna said. Lucius came out and tried to find his lover. He found her. Lucius goes around to find everyone and say some things. He finds out Tehuda's crazy too. The heroes go to war with their own armies against Kyrios. Kyrios went ham. Everything was dying. Nui was getting stressed out. Meanwhile, Tyang picked up the Furin. Boop, he dropped them back on Haranya, which wasn't called that yet, and then he went back to fight Kyrios. Kyrios killed Tyang. Now all the Furins can remember his memories. Then Aranzeb went to fight Kyrios. Kyrios killed Aranzeb. Now all the elves can remember his memories. Melisara went to fight Kyrios. Kyrios killed Melisara. Nobody really remembers her memories, but maybe the Harani kind of, but that's later. Somehow Kiprosa sealed Kyrios away. Nui got everyone through a big gate passing through the hereafter, and they all showed up on the western continent. This made Nui dissolve. The gate to the garden closed. Also, Aurora exploded, and there was a nuclear winter, which the Hiram survived by living in a cave. Now everybody worships Nui for her sacrifice.